How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the Electrovolt Level 2 EV Charger. It charges up to 40 amps. It has a 40-50 plugs, which means it has four prongs. When you plug these guys in, if there's some kind of fault on the EV charger, you could ruin the charge circuitry in your car. When that happens, it could be very, very costly to repair. I'm okay with plugging this one in because they pass UL2594, which is an EV charger spec. If you don't design an EV charger to meet all those specs, most likely it's not going to pass. They measure abnormal tests such as transformer burnout tests, transformer overload tests, short circuit tests, component fault tests, EV cable secureness tests, vehicle drive over tests. Just the name of the test alone, it covers like two or three pages. If it hasn't passed UL certification, it probably won't pass. Why? Because it's stringent enough that most manufacturers, when they go through the UL test, they find something wrong. They actually have to modify the design to meet those specifications go back and retest the testing itself costs a lot of money so not all manufacturers is going to go through this trouble so when it says is ul listed or csa listed you can bet that it's going to be very very reliable let's take a look inside this box and see how well designed it is and then afterwards i'll install it and try it out it comes with an 18 foot cable diameter is about 0.8 inches this is the charge plug it has a grommet to cover the front the connector itself looks pretty sturdy. The AC comes in over here and it looks like they're not using the neutrals. They have these ferret beads to minimize noise from going into the device and also going out. Don't try this at home. This is the RFID reader, the panel for the four LED indicators. Here's the Wi-Fi antenna. Look at that right there. This is the neutral line that's been cut off and it really looks like they can use a 6-50 plug later on. The Wi-Fi connection button, it seems incredibly durable. You probably won't press it all that many times, but it has a really solid feel to it. Got some pretty strong strain relief. This is weather resistance up to IP65. It can withstand low pressure water jets from every which way. You can see along the perimeter, there's a little rubber grommet that will do the weather sealing. Also on the back panel, there's a little rubber grommet here for the weather sealing as well. Before you begin installation, make sure you have a 14-50 plug. It needs to be on a 50 amp breaker. If you don't have something like this, you need to hire a qualified electrician to do it for you. I have two holes here from a previous EV charger. The mounting panel for this new one is also six inch apart. And I'll add two more for these two holes. Put it right on, roughly marking it for now. It comes with four of these mounting screws. When you tighten them, these expand and you grip onto the drywall from the back. Looks like it needs a 3 8 inch drill bit. Put the washer on the back plate, then thread the bolt through. Same with the bottom. These screws line up over here and we drop it in. Put the locking screw on both sides. It doesn't come with security screws so you might want to replace these on your own. On the other side as well. This is a 6-50 plug. It has three total prongs. This charger comes with a 14-50. It has four total prongs. This is only for demonstration purposes. Whatever plug that you have, you should definitely get a charger that matches your plug. For now, I'm just going to connect it with this adapter here. It's a 6-50 to a 14-50 converter. There we go. This is the cable holder. I have previous holes here as well. For this one, you might need a long screwdriver. Put it in, plug it in here. Turn on the breaker. Got the power light, the charge light, fault light, and Wi-Fi light. Does it work? Well, of course it does, but I have to put in this Tesla adapter over here. Wave it a little bit. And I got to start their app here. It's called WE Charge. Press start charging. It jumps up to 16 amps after a while. You can read a couple of different metrics. 245 volts. It's doing four kilowatts. And so far it has consumed zero kilowatt hour. The current limit is set to 40 and you can only change the current limit if you're not charging. After some time, it ramps all the way up to 40 amps. It's doing 9.8 kilowatts, 0.1 kilowatt hour already consumed. Let's double check this on the Tesla app. The Tesla app doesn't really tell me how many kilowatt hour it's charging at. It does it more in terms of how many miles per hour it's charging, but it does say it's 40 amp charging at 238 volts, but the charger's at 242 volts. Now, if I stop the charger, 
it says pull out charger. You can't really change the charge current right now. You gotta pull it out. Let me pull it out. And now on the app, you can change the current after you take it out all the way down to six amps. You can change it by as little as one amp at a time. Also in the app, you can do a charge scheduling. You can limit the amount of energy. Let's say you wanna only put in 33 kilowatt hour. There's a current limit and then there's an end time as well. The repeat function, you can change the day of the week that you want this schedule to be enabled and so on and so forth. If you guys are interested in this product, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.